There are multiple factors at play here, Timur. The first is that um, both economies are not doing particularly well right now, and tensions between the two certainly adds to volatility and uncertainty. So I think there is an interest in both sides on tamping that down. The second factor is the U.S. political calendar. Over the next um, uh, 12 to 14 months, there is no political payoff to the administration or to um, any member of either party in Congress uh, to appear soft in China. So we'll hear a lot of harsh rhetoric. But the third element is that I think both sides understand that they are in this together, um, that there are areas in which they need to cooperate, issues like climate change and so on, um, but they need to separate that from the areas where there is inherent conflict and where there are seen as existential but, but issues. Being the, the broader context doesn't allow for that to happen. I mean, President Biden may have that intent, but as I say, the Republican Party is certainly nowhere near that. The U.S. public is also seemingly against that. I think what the two leaders are trying to set up is a stage where at least there is no deterioration in the relationships between the two countries. Certainly we're going to have continued tensions and I don't think there is going to be a de-escalation. But what I got, uh, the sense I got from talking to Chinese officials on my previous visits and to officials in Washington is that if things don't get worse in the next 12 months, that is already a victory for both sides. And at least the sense that we can keep things at that stable level will at least take some of the uncertainty in the relationship between the two countries off the table, and that's a good thing.